Welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. So today's video is going to be, of course, part two of the Saturday Morning Shuffle Troll video. In the last video, I had mentioned how I was just going to do the sketch lines and um, the shading just because the video was getting long. So in this video, I'm going to be randomly generating my color palette just to kind of keep in the spirit of Saturday Morning Shuffle. I could go with boring troll colors, but maybe he'll end up being like neon pink or something crazy like that. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my number generator on screen here and I'm gonna go crazy, go stupid and pick a number one to 100. And then I'm gonna go to coolers.co and I'm going to shuffle the color palette that many times, whatever number it lands on. And whatever it ends up being, that will be my color palette. So let's see what I end up with. 48, not terrible, but I'm not going to put you all through that. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle it 48 times and then you're just going to have to trust me that that's the color palette that it landed on. So let's go ahead and open, oh, here we go, coolers.co. I love this website. I love the way it looks when you first open it. It's just so, it's just so pretty. Like this is so pretty. Um, enough of that. So if you don't know how this website works, basically it creates pre-generated color palettes and you just hit spacebar to shuffle and then you can save them and export them into your coloring programs. So here we go, 48 times, 47, 48. Mmm, okay. I can make it work, I can make it work. Let's go ahead and get started with the drawing. All right, well, We've got the color palette, so now I just gotta figure out how I want to designate these colors into where. I think, I think I want to do this as the skin. Just, I don't know. I guess it's the closest to gray. <laughs> I know I said, oh, what if he has a big whole pink, and then I end up with like fuchsia, because that's got jokes, I guess. Um. It would be kind of cool to do his hair blue, so. And then I guess his outfit will be in this purplish. So I won't be using like only these colors. I'll be using tints, tones, and shades of these colors to give some variation. Um, I'm also going to be doing some more kind of in-depth coloring like what I did with the Evie Gajinka girls like how I had my shading layer on top but then I also still did full coloring underneath of it just to kind of give it those layers of richness so I'm going to be doing it with that I'm going to be doing that with this one too um so yeah let me stop talking and let's get drawing so even though I didn't 100% quite care for the end result, like there's a point where I'm working on this and just kind of get tired of it. I don't mind the character design um, because like this is what I do. I like coming up with weird different characters. I mean, I guess he's not like weird, weird. He's, he's a troll. But he looks like what you would expect a troll to look like. Um, the colors were definitely a fun challenge to work with. But then just working in the detail, it got to a point where I felt like I was overworking it. And maybe I'll address that at that particular point in the video, but we're starting off pretty tame here. I'm just kind of blocking out, you know, my color layout or what I call the chrome coat, um, which was that first part where I was just kind of dabbing stuff in. <laughs> um, establishing some shading, more chrome coat. Um, cell shading is actually what this is uh, formally called. And just kind of getting a feel for where I want the lights to be. I do kind of turn some things on and off with the background and the lines. And you can kind of see that there was a little bit of a jump in where I show you guys how much detail I'm actually putting into this drawing just because it's a lot of work. I think overall 
and it, it doesn't, you know, for people who do this professionally, like they have studios paying them to do this, can spend upwards of like 16, 20, 22, sometimes 30 hours on a painting like this. Um, if I had kept working with it, maybe I could have done a little bit better. But again, it's a Saturday morning shuffle. This is supposed to be fun. So when it stopped getting fun for me, that's when I stopped working on it. But I didn't just give up on it. Um, there are, I think I counted, seven layers of shading. There's only one layer of color. Everything else is just working and shading and overpainting. And I think I spent about... The line art took about 45 minutes. And then the painting itself took about... Mm, I'm trying to think of how long I was filming for, like, in real time. I think it was about two, maybe two and a half hours overall. Because there's a lot that I actually just didn't bother recording. Because I knew I was going to cut it out of the final cut anyway. Um, a lot of it was just me kind of fussing around with particular things. Like, the way I'm fussing around with the nails. It's just kind of flipping between the different layers. And figuring out what layer needs to have what cut. And I explain my technique um, in this video, and if you want to go ahead and watch it, I'll put a link in the description, or you can just click the uh, card that's up at the top, where basically I do my lines, I set it to overlay, and then I do my colors, and then I kind of paint everything over it. I didn't really do that as much in this one because I usually when I do that method, I don't really care so much about the line art because I know everything's going to get painted over, but with this one, I started with really strong line art, and in the other video, I was still using GIMP, where I had to modify the brushes to heck and back to get it to look the way I wanted to, and finally actually found a pen tool that kind of looks the way this does. But for the last few videos, well actually for all the videos I've been doing for 2021 and the later part of 2020, I've been using CSP. And the brushes actually respond to pen pressure, which is why my line art looks way better than it ever did with anything I did with GIMP. So now instead of trying to hide the line art, I would rather accentuate it and make it a part of the overall art instead of just painting over everything. So my challenge was, instead of, again, just painting over everything, how do I integrate the line art into this painting in a way that makes sense? So there was a lot of me messing with the layers and fussing with levels of shadow and depth and detail that made the line art made sense. And overall, I feel like a score out of 1 to 10, 1 being absolute dog butt, 10 being holy cow, hire this girl on the spot. I rated this personally at 5 or 6 because I know in the past I have done better, but I also know that it's been a while since I've done a full painting in this style and for me this was kind of working out kinks and hiccups and doing a painting in this style in a new program with new brushes because up to this point I'd just been using CSP to work on my webcomic which is all just line art color shading. It's pretty basic. So to figure out which brushes are best for skin texture, for leather, for metal, for like this, them, and the other, this was a really good experiment in that and I think I found a happy balance with, you know, just figuring out how much time and effort and which brushes I need to use to actually get something to look the way I want it to. And I think what I'll do different next time I do something like this is just start with all of my levels of layers of shading and lighting that I need to. Just get that out of the way and then maybe do just a base layer of painting underneath 
and then draw all of my details over top, which I've done that as well too. I think a more popular method um, for doing the kind of more, not photorealistic, but more realistic paintings in this particular style is to do everything in grayscale and then paint over that. I haven't <laughs> quite gotten um, a method of doing that that looks good when I try to do it, so maybe I need to watch some more tutorials. Maybe you guys can watch me follow a tutorial um, and we can both figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, as far as execution, being as rusty as I am for doing something like this, I think I did okay. There, again, was a point where I had to kind of step back and like not look at it for a few hours and come back to make sure that I wasn't just hating it because I've been sitting here and just like staring at all of this gray. And there was a point where I couldn't figure out like, why is it so dark? Um, I don't use black for this one. Um, as a matter of fact, the first two layers of shading that I did were kind of like a smoky tan. And then I do another layer over top. So those two layers were specifically for figuring out where the lighting falls on the skin in relation to the body itself, like around his stomach and under his arms and under the neck and blah, blah, blah. And then you can see here, I have this third layer, which is blue. It was like a midnight blue. And I set it to, I guess it was another overlay. It was either overlay, hard light, pin light. It was something like that where it would stand out against the other two layers and would kind of meld everything together. And this was meant to be my harshest contrast. This was supposed to be kind of the overhead lighting of like the light coming through the cells in the top of the hallway. And then also because this is such a dark place, he is away from where the torches are. So all of his front would be dark. And so I stepped back and was like, oh, he's way too light. So that's why I added this other, like, just heavy layer. I did some minor shading on a couple of other layers. So technically, it's really only three big layers with four minor layers of shading. And here you can see I'm just playing with that skin texture again, just really working it out, trying to get everything to look like it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. So for the skin, you can kind of see I'm just brushing things on, brushing in highlights and lowlights and just giving it a bumpy texture. It's a little bit like the same way that I do my bubbles, except for when I, I don't erase the middle. I just kind of paint everything over and make it look 3D and gross, more or less. So now I'm turning the background back on and messing with that shading layer one more time just because I still thought it was too light. It wasn't grungy, it wasn't dirty enough for my taste. Um, and just finishing up the last little bits of details like the metal on the keys. And then <laughs> At some point, I decide that I do want to kind of mess around with the background, but not do anything serious with it. You'll see what I mean in a few minutes here. Well, at this point, I'm just sick of looking at it. And you know what? Sometimes that's okay. But here's what I can do so that it doesn't look completely like dog butt. I'm just gonna fill out the background. Um, Cause I'm actually kind of fine with this minimalistic background thing going on. It's just the 
idea of a jail cell somewhere for the character to sit so he's not floating in space but I'm about to float him in some space so I'm just gonna start a new layer bump this up here and I know you can't see what I'm doing here. oh actually you can um, because of where I have everything pulled over normally you can't but I'm going to try to remember the command to change there we go layer color and then I'm gonna make this uh, the dialog box actually is out of the way mm, something like dirty paper <clears throat> Well, what the heck? All right, give me just a second. I'm gonna fix this. Okay, so come to find out that layer color command is not what I thought it was. So whatever. Um, da -da 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 -da. so we're gonna close this, and we're gonna go. What we're gonna do? I want to do this on a new layer, so I don't mess that up. And so now you can see all the other little doohickeys and whatnots that I did. I'm just going to turn these off just so it doesn't have so much data to crunch when I do uh, squish the image down. Anyway, so now we've got this kind of beige background that I like to work on because it's easier to look at than white. It also helps me see if I'm missing any like coloring spots versus white because sometimes it can be really hard to tell so now i'm just going to go over here and do a little doodly do and just make it look pretty and finished more or less got a cool computer background maybe I'll even use it but that's it for today's video our return to Saturday morning shuffles um, I hope you guys enjoyed it parts one and part two if you watch both huge thank you don't forget to like comment and maybe subscribe if you enjoy watching my content that way you'll get notified when I post videos um, again I'm trying to return kind of back to a regular schedule but yeah for now I'll see you guys next time have a weird day